So um, using the coping saw then, the coping saw is a wonderful and versatile hand tool that is designed for cutting curves. Um, because we're a learning facility, one of the first things that you want to do is check the setup, um, just like with our machinery, check the setup um, of your tool. And so at the moment, I've just grabbed this one from the cupboard and I can see two things. Um, firstly, I can see that the teeth of the blade are pointed forwards and I actually want those pointed back towards the handle. And the other thing I can see is that there isn't um, very much tension on here because if I go um, to turn the handle, my pins um, on my tool are turning fairly easily as well. And so what I'm gonna do is unscrew the handle. Now you'll notice as I unscrew it, that I am supporting this pin because I don't want, when I unscrew it, this to turn and the other one to stay still because what will happen is that the blade will begin to twist. Um, and these blades are uh, fairly brittle and they will break fairly easily and so we don't ever want to twist the blade. So I'm supporting that pin as I unscrew the handle. Now unscrewing the handle is taking the tension off the blade and when the tension is off the blade and this handle can rattle freely I can remove it like so um, and that's a deliberate feature partly so we can replace broken blades but also so that if we're cutting through um, material and we want to make a hole we can drill a hole in an appropriate place and feed the blade through then loading this uh, correctly with the teeth back towards the handle, we can put it back into our coping saw, okay, with the blade loaded where we want to make our cut. Um, for this first uh, demonstration, I'll just be cutting um, an exterior curve, so I'm not cutting inside. So teeth back towards the handle. Then there are two pins and a, and a slot, and so the blade will go in to the slot, and it's lodging behind um, a little groove there. The pins are lodging behind a little groove. Um, likewise on this side. So I'm gonna drop it into the slot. And I'm gonna support it there while I do the handle up. And it can be a little bit tricky just until I get some tension on it. Then when I do it up, I want to make sure that my pins, my two pins here, are in a line with the frame. Okay, um, and I'm going to again support the one nearest the blade as I do the handle up. How tight do I want the handle? Well, I want the handle um, to be so tight that when I test the tension on the blade, I'm not getting very much bounce. And so that if I held the pin uh, and imagined me turning, actually maybe even without holding the pin, if I imagine me turning that handle, it's not turning the pin at the same time. If I didn't have enough tension on, we might see this. So as I turn the handle there, the pin has turned and I don't want that. So I'm gonna reset it um, and just do that up. Nicely like so. Um, second thing is that we want all of our pencil cases and any tools out of the way because we are gonna be sawing and we want a reasonable distance um, to be able to pass through the wood. Uh, you will have your wood marked out and you can't see my marking out because I've got it on the side I'm looking at. Um, then I'm going to close up my vise. Um, I haven't got my work sitting high up like this. Okay, If it's high up there, it is too high up. It won't be supported properly. If it was a brittle material, it may crack. Um, either way, there's going to be a lot of noise and a lot of vibration if it's that high up. So it's going to be going right down there like that. And that may mean that when I've cut, if I've got to cut a bit lower than the bench, when I've got near to the bench, I will undo the vise and raise it a little bit. Um, then I'll cut there, undo the vise, raise it a bit, cut there. Okay, but for now we're going to start with it nice and low and properly supported. I'm going to lock it. Uh, I don't do my vice up as hard as humanly possible, just until um, I feel enough resistance and my work's held well. Okay, um, and that would be your setup for the coping saw.